today we are going to solve Cambridge level physics paper that is uh, for October number 2022 and the paper code is 5054 uh, slash 12 so let's start off with our first question the diagram shows three forces acting on a block uh, the resultant force is 6 newton to the right so the object is moving 6 newtons towards the right side so this is going to be the resultant force so this means the object is moving towards the right force which additional force produces the resultant force of 3 newton to the left so what you need to do is so which additional force produces the resultant force of 3 newton to the left okay so what you need to do is you have to check this thing that it is going to move the basically the resultant force is going to be towards this side so you need to cancel out this thing so for this uh, you have to uh, additional force would be like 9 newton because this and this is going to sum up with 11 newton and then the, the object is going to move in this direction so the f correct answer for this is going to be b okay a teacher measures the length of her classroom what is the most appropriate instrument to use that's an easy question so this is going to be the right answer because the other instruments may have errors for example like one caliper cannot do this thing it it does not allow to measure the length of the room micrometer is used for small things a 30 centimeter rule this is not possible again chances of errors are there which value of 1000 of a meter is this okay so what you need to do is 1000 times 100 because 1 meter equals to 100 so you, when you do the calculation so it's going to be 0 0.1 centimeter so option d is your right answer a car of mass 1000 kg is traveling down a steep hill the brake fails and the driver uses a horizontal sand filled safety road to stop the car the car enters the sand at a speed of 10 meters per second and experiences a constant stopping force of 2500 newtons. How far does the car travel in the sand before coming to rest? So what is given is mass which is around 1000 kg, the initial velocity that is 10 meters per second, then is your final velocity because the car is getting stopped and the work done is going to be like kinetic energy which is uh, okay so we are going to use a change in kinetic energy over here so this is going to be half mv square minus half mu square so this is final velocity and this is initial velocity okay so by putting the values we will get uh, the initial final velocity is zero then it's going to be the this one then I put the values in. so now you see uh, when you subtract this uh, kinetic energy or when you find out the you know, change in kinetic energy so you'll get a negative 5000 joules so it's a scalar quantity so you no need to add negative sign and by applying the formula work done equals to force times distance so by putting work done equals to 500 joules or joules and the force is 2500 newtons so distance you need to find it out so when you do the calculation so you will end up with this answer a ball starts from rest and roll down a steep slope the ball then rolls along a rough horizontal ground which graph shows the speed of the ball at a different time so now over here you see this thing initially if i talk about uh, this graph so you see the speed is getting constant over here because it's on the y-axis you have to see x-axis and y-axis to figure out your answer so it's constant because after increasing the speed the speed is getting constant so it's not possible so okay now over here you see the speed is not starting from zero not you see the ball starts from rest not starting from rest <clears throat> okay in the case C uh, you see this thing the ball has dropped so 
so the, over here in the option C, the, you can see the ball has stopped, so it's not going to be the right answer. So option D is going to be the right answer for this question. Okay, moving to the next question. A block of wood is placed on a table. External forces act on the block, but the block remains stationary. A student suggests three conditions for the block to remain stationary. Condition P. The resultant force on the block must equal zero. Condition Q. The resultant moments on the block must equal zero. Condition R. The external forces must act through the center of mass of the block. Which conditions are necessary for the block to remain stationary? So in this case, by studying this, option P and Q, they are right. Okay. So in order to make the object stationary, the sum of all the forces must be equal to zero and there there should be no turning effects or moments basically this is what i am talking about a car travels at a 60 kilometers per hour on a straight road the road is dry the driver applies the brake suddenly the table shows the thinking distance the braking distance and the stopping distance the same car is driven by the same driver at a 60 kilometers per hour on the same road when it is wet the driver applies the brake suddenly again what is the effect of wet road on the thinking distance braking distance and the stopping distance so you see over here obviously the thinking distance will not change because you will require the same amount of time to think either you have to apply brake or not the braking distance will increase obviously because it's a wet floor so there will be lead friction and obviously the stopping distance will also be increased so after looking at these options so this is the right answer for this question a car travels on a horizontal road around a bend at a constant speed what is the direction of resultant force on the car so a car travels horizontal around a bend so this is traveling around a bend it's like this the car is traveling around a bend so the force will be towards the center of the bend so the object is basically moving in a circular path a student writes two statements about mass and weight mass is the property of a body which resists change in the state of rest or motion yes weight is the amount of substance now which statement is correct so statement a is correct the graph shows how the extension of a spring changes with the mass suspended from it when the spring is on plate planet X and when the spring is on planet Y. Which conclusion can be drawn from these graphs? It is not possible to compare the gravitational field on the planet X and Y. So you see this is extension and this is mass. So this is on the planet X and this is on the planet Y. So there's nothing to be like uh, about the gravitational field. The gravitational field, field uh, there. the gravitational field on planet X is three times the gravitational field on the planet Y. So let me check. So over here you see if you try to take out the gradient, mm. so you can see these two points. So this is going to be 2 and 30 and this is going to be 0 and 0. So for this planet X, the gradient will be like uh, it's going to be 30 minus 0 and 2 upon 30 over 2 which is going to be 15. And on the planet Y, so if you take the gradient, it's going to be uh, 6 and 30 and 0, 0. So 30 minus 0 and this is 6. So this is going to be 5. So you see there is a difference of 5, uh, 3, sorry. So option D is going to be the right answer. A student finds the density of irregular shape object. He chooses his equipment from the list. Stop watch measuring cylinder panels. Which equipment does the student needs to use? So in order to find out the density, you need this and this. So stop watch is not required. So option D is going to be your right answer. A uniform beam is pivoted at its center. Two weights are placed on the beam in the position shown and the beam is balanced by an upward force F. What is the size of F? 
so uh, you have to find out uh, again the moment thing so you have to apply put your pencil at the pivot and then you have to move along these forces to find out whether these forces are moving in a clockwise and anti-clockwise direction so i'm just uh, applying these uh, principle of moment and putting these values So F1 is going to be like F3, I'll do it 30 times 40 plus F times 50 and then it's going to be 60 times 30. So when you do the calculations, so it's going to be F is equals to 12 newtons. So option B is going to be your right answer. Four objects of equal mass rest on a table. The center of mass of an, each object is labeled G. Which object is the least stable? So in this scenario, what you need to do is like you have to find out the center of gravity, which is like this is fine. This is uh, unstable equilibrium. This is fine. This is also fine. So the center of gravity is high for B, object B. So this is the least stable. So this is the right answer. Each tire of a car has an area of 100 cm square uh, in contact with ground. The car has a mass of 1600 kg. The weight of the car is equally distributed among four tires. The gravitational field strength is this. What is the pressure? So we need to find out the pressure. So we know that pressure is equal to force over area and this is going to be weight over area as well so if i apply these values 16 into 10 mg over four times the because there are four tires so if you apply this thing because you see the answers are also given in newtons so that's why i'm not converting it into meters so if you do this thing so you will end up with uh, option c this is going to be a correct answer so one, two, three, four. So four, one, uh, four, and this is going to be zero. So that's the correct answer. A gas cylinder contains a volume V1 of a gas at a pressure P1. The volume is reduced to V2 without any change of temperature. What is the expression of change in temperature? So again, you have to apply the Boyle's law. This is question is about Boyle's law. So you see uh, they want to know the pressure the P2 will be equals to P1 V1 over V2 now they want to know the change in pressure so this is going to be P1 V1 over V2 minus P1 so this is the right answer and this is going to be your correct option a constant force F pulls a block of weight W up the slope uh, as shown how much work is done by f in pulling the block up by the slope so in this case you have to multiply this thing force and the length so for this because this is in this direction uh, because uh, if you go for the definition of work so it's the work is uh, done when an object moves in the direction of applied force so Moving to the next question, the input power to a motor is 12 volts. So P is equal to 12 volts. The motor wastes energy, which is 590 joules, and in energy and time is one minute. Okay, what is the efficiency? One minute. So this is going to be 60 seconds. So now you apply this. The formula energy is equals to p times t which is 12 times 60 and this is going to be 720 joules so waste energy is 590 joules which is given in the question so basically what you need to do is useful energy we have to calculate useful energy is equals to 720 minus 590 and that will be 130 joules so 130 divided by 720 times 100 and you will end up with 18 percent so option a is the right answer for this okay 
Electric motors have an efficiency of about 90% when used in an electric train, which form of wasted energy are produced. So it's going to be thermal energy and the sound. What is the unit of power? So again, you just remember if you have the word done over time, so it's joules over second. So option B is going to be your right answer. The diagram represents four thermometers. Which thermometer has the greatest sensitivity and which thermometer has greatest strength? So you now you see this is from starting from zero and this is 25. So reading can be taken like 25 degrees Celsius till this. 30 to 40 this has a reading for 10 degrees Celsius. Okay. And this has 250. So you can read temperature till 250 and this is again 200 so basically i have calculated the difference so for sensitivity uh, the q one has more sensitivity and for the greatest range it's going to be r so option c is correct one so for sensitivity remember they are saying the range should be less it is trapped in a mat metal cylinder by a piston the piston is free to move and the trapped air is at the atmospheric pressure the cylinder is in hot water the cylinder is taken out of the water and left to cool what happens to the mass of air in the cylinder and its pressure as it cools so now you see the mass is going to like it does not going to change but the pressure of the air is also not going to change in this scenario a mirror is placed in the path of a ray light, incident ray, normal, this, this. Through which angle does the direction of the ray light changes? So at what angle is going to change? So we know that the angle of incident is making 40 degrees. So obviously this is also going to be 40 degree. And this is because this is the whole angle is 90 degree. So this is going to be 50 degree. So obviously if you do this thing, so this and, uh, sorry my mistake this if you know the angles property so this is also going to be 50 degree so this is going to be like with through which angle uh, does the direction of the ray of light changes so it's going to be c so you see this is the angle a ray of light is uh, in water is refracted at the surface into a which diagram shows the angle of incident and the angle of refraction so we know that in the angle of incident so the angle is going to be incident ray this is incident ray and this is normal so the incident ray and uh, the angle between these two lines is going to be the incident ray and this is refracted so option a is going to be right angle this is not making angle with normal this is also not making angle with the normal this is right but this is wrong because it should be like this so option a is going to be your right answer for this a thin converging lens from a real focused image of an object as shown uh, which distance is equal to the focal length so focal length is the distance between your optical center that is this point and this point so the distance between these two is called as your focal length the principal focus so the correct answer will be lx which ray diagram shows the action of diverging lens okay so for this you can see this is converging sort of thing this is also converging converging so this is divergent so option d is the right answer Many devices produce electromagnetic waves when operating. Which devices produce electromagnetic waves at, of highest frequency? Mobile phones, sandbags, television controllers, toasters. So B is the right answer. Okay, they use the uh, ultraviolet rays. This is going to be radio waves. Okay, so this is infrared and this is also infrared. Okay, so B is the right answer. Which two frequencies are both outside the range of audible frequency for a healthier human ear? So this is the range. This is not in uh, human because that is like uh, 20 to 20,000 hertz. So you can hear this one. 
ये सेम बोथ आउट से दी रेंज इन दिस केस यू कैन हेयर दिस बट यू कॉन्ट हेयर दिस वन येस बट के नॉट ओके साउंड वेव द डिस्प्लेड एज अ ट्रेस ऑन अ स्क्रीन ऑफ एन एसोलिसूब विथ ट्रेस शोज अ साउंड दैट बिकम्स क्वाइटर विद अ हायर फिच For this question, you see the option C is right because the amplitude is first increased in this case, and now this is quieter. It's going to be quieter, and you see when amplitude decreases, so frequency is going to be increased. So over here, you see the frequency has increased. Let's suppose this is one second. So in one second, it has covered around three or th uh, approximately three waves. So over here. in one second this is one wave this is again this is not quite a thing it has frequency almost the same but this is a louder voice this portion okay okay question number 29 the north pole of a permanent magnet is placed in terms close to the piece of iron the south pole of another magnet and the piece of copper which objects are attached to the north pole of the permanent magnet so Where the key is attracted, not attracted. So pieces of iron will be attracted. So this means that these, these all options are incorrect. So option A is common sense, which you guys can clearly select this thing because pieces of iron are select are attracted by the magnets. Four plotting compasses are placed near by a power magnet. Ignore any effects of the Earth's magnetic field. Whole compass appears like this, which is possible position of this compass. So for this, uh, you can see it's going to be either this compass. Uh, one compasses appear like this because you see for a power magnet, the magnetic fields would be like this. so arrow will be going like this and inside the south pole okay so for this if you see this thing so these are going to be like this so option c is going to be the correct answer or in this scenario because this is going to be this direction this is again this direction option b will be in this direction so obviously we know that these uh, direction this is not possible this is uh, i mean to say that these are correctly drawn so obviously option c is going to be the left one out okay two oppositely charged plastic rods are placed next to each other which row describes it and explain how the rods move so after checking the options it's going to be c because the movements is going to be towards each other because they are oppositely charged and the explanation is also they have given it the same thing a meter that measures the rate of flow of charges in a resistor is placed in a circuit what is the name of this meter and how it is connected in resistor so that meter name is ammeter and it is always connected in series so this is common sense question you can get it from the theory part which device is used to convert electrical energy into kinetic energy so that is basically the motor thing which is uses electricity and that converts uh, your uh, let's say i'll talk about the your uh, treadmills okay moving to the next question why is a fuse used in an electrical appliances so obviously we know that that is a protective device so it basically protects the device so you see if uh, there is a fuse that has a rating of 4 amperes so it means that if a current is moved more than that so it's going to break so when it's going to break so it means that your device way is going to be saved it's not going to be like short circuit or anything so the fuse is a device that protects the appliances for getting short circuits and if the voltage or a current that basically increases so it's going to protect your appliances okay a coil of wire is rotated on a constant rate between the poles of a u shaped magnet the two ends of the coils are connected to a different slip ring which graph shows how the voltage between the slip rings varies with time so obviously it's going to be the c one and 
uh, you have to again read the theory to, in order to understand but still if you are unable to get it i'll explain it to you in the uh, later video you guys can uh, write a comment on this okay which statement about the transformer is correct the changing magnetic field in the transformer induces an emf in the coil yes this is correct the correct answer for this is this because i have gone through the other options as well so basically the when there is a question and in which uh, like you have to memorize the theory thing so i am not explaining that uh, questions or mcqs uh, but uh, in which where there is explanation so i, I will be posting uh, or giving you a brief and explanation on that thing so next question three types of radiation emitted by unstable nuclei or helium nuclei short wavelength and electromagnetic waves what are these three types of radiation so obviously it's going to be the alpha the helium one is alpha uh, electromagnetic waves is this electrons as beta so just remember this thing so that whenever you have another question regarding this so it's going to help you out the diagram shows the relay used to switch on an electric motor so this is the diagram which is working on electromagnetic principle and the student make five statements to explain how the relay switches on the electric motor the statements are not in correct order the current in the coil magnetizes this okay so i'll go be highlighting or cut uh, giving you the right answer for that so obviously the switch s is in, is in the primary circuit is closed so you see this is the working of a relay different radioactive emissions have a different characteristics uh, student lists the following characteristics for an alpha particle characteristic p it has a positive charge yes uh, we have to find out the characteristics of alpha particles q it is highly penetrable no it is a component of electromagnetic spectrum no so option a is going to be right answer a wooden object is believed to be 6000 year old which isotopes found in the object is used to determine the age of the object so it's going to be the carbon 14 again you have to memorize this thing you have to remember this thing so thank you very much and if you have any questions any things you want to discuss about this paper so just uh, write down in the comment box and I will be posting or giving you the explanation uh, again. Thank you very much.